Can I just tell you this morning that you are amazing? Has anybody told you that yet today? Tessa, thank Tessa's like, thank you. I'll take that. Has anybody told you today that you're amazing? You are amazing. Whether you're here in the sanctuary or you're out in the hub, you are amazing. Hub, do you know that you're amazing today out in the hub? See that? They, they got the picture. They are amazing. You cannot forget that they're out here. We, we average, for the year, we're averaging just about 40 people out in the hub every Sunday. Do you realize that? Yeah. We got to set up more chairs. Okay, we got to set up more chairs out there, and, and we, I think we got to hang some more TVs because we don't want them to get a stiff neck in that process of, of being out in the hub, and I so appreciate them. I am really excited today. I'm excited to share in this series, I Love My Community. Yesterday, yesterday charges my batteries, okay? I just want you to know that, and, and I get the best job in the whole place, okay? I am, I'm in charge of the party zone. Okay, that's my job. My job is to make it exciting to stand in line for an hour and a half. Okay, all right? And so they give me that job, and we play loud music, and, and I, re I really came across a really good idea. It was totally by accident. We handed out, I don't, I don't know how many bottles of bubbles, and we did a bubble jam to start the whole thing. Okay, you're playing loud music that you can dance to, and, and we're just saying, blow your bubbles. Everybody blow, blow. You can't not dance. You can't. It's, it's just too much fun when you have a bubble jam to start the whole thing off. And, and it looked just like that. That picture in the lower right-hand corner yesterday, as 357 people, kids, came for backpacks, and uh, we had a great time. So the idea here of loving your community, you say, how can I love my community? What does it mean? What does it look like? And I believe that it looks like, it looks like serving, but it also looks like relationship. Okay? Not just merely serving, but it looks like relationship. I believe that it looks like your interaction with others from within our community. Pastor Jack, who was my senior pastor when I was out east, he used to say all the time, and he, and he just drove this into our, our brains, the kingdom of God is a kingdom of right relationships, and I believe that that extends beyond our, our family, but beyond our church family, and it extends out into our community as well. So we love our community through the sum of our interactions within the community, but there are two philosophies when it comes to our relationship with our community, and the difference between these two philosophies is they're the source of uh, origination. One is an earthly source, and the other is a heavenly source. And they both are, are spoken of, they are both promoted as wisdom. Okay? Did you know there are two kinds of wisdom? There is earthly wisdom, and then there is a wisdom that the Bible says comes down from heaven and they represent systems from which they emanate. And every day in your interactions within the community, you have a choice to make. You can choose which way you want to function, which system you want to function in. You say, Pastor, I don't, I don't know if I follow you. Well, let's, let's go back and let's go all the way to the garden. When Adam and Eve ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the Bible says that immediately they were filled with shame and they were aware of their sin. Previously, they had been eating from the tree of life. They were unaware of sin. They were unaware of, their, of any shame Okay, And that tells us that we have a choice. You and I have a choice about which tree we're going to live in. Are we going to live in the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and be aware of, of, all, the, of all the wrongs and all the rights, or are we going to live in the tree of life? When we live in the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, we come at things from a, a black and white perspective. We come at things from a judgmental perspective, but when we live in the tree of life, we come from a perspective of hope and life. We have a choice to make. And this 
impacts how we love our community. You see, the wisdom of this world is different than the wisdom that is of God. And my screen just went completely blank. But it's okay. It's all right. Oh, there, look at there. I hit X one more time, though, and it's going to lock me out, and I'm going to be in real big trouble. Um, let me just uh, hit one more button, and I think I'm good. Come on. We have had technological problems today. I don't know what it's about, but, but we got it. We, we are, no, no, don't give me anything new because I can't use it then. Don't you understand that? Okay, I think we're coming back up. I think we're going to be okay. Loading is a scary, a scary word. Okay, all right. So if we're going to speak to our community in a way that they're going to hear us, we need to choose to speak wisdom that is not of this world. If they're going to understand it, to speak in a way that they're going to, they're going to really, it's going to, it's going to speak to their heart. We need to choose wisdom, and thankfully, James chapter one tells us that if we lack wisdom, that we can ask of God, who gives generously to all without finding fault. And I'm so excited about that. I want to, this morning. I want to look at James chapter three, starting at verse thirteen. Let me read thirteen through eighteen for you. Follow along as I read. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder in every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. Friends, wisdom is demonstrated in our relationships. Now, everything that I'm going to say today can be applied to your relationship with your spouse, your relationship with your children, your relationship with your parents, your relationship with your siblings, your relationship with your next door neighbor, your relationship with people that work in your office or strangers that you meet on the street. It can be translated to all of those relationships, although we're focusing on our community today, they are, they're, they're literally, they're, that you can transpose them to any relationship. Now, because we're coming at this idea of wisdom from another system, others may not always get it initially. Although they, they can sense something, they can sense that they even like it, but they may not understand it. And if you want to love your community, you need to respond to your community with heavenly wisdom. And when we respond with earthly wisdom, we, don't, we generally get the exact opposite of what we would like to get for a response back from our community. Wisdom is not intelligence, it's not IQ, it's not an education, it's not degrees, it's not smarts. In fact, it's not about what you think at all. Wisdom is about what you do and how you respond. And in the way of the world, we, the response is bitterness, selfish envy, uh, ambition rather, envy. It's, it's what James would call foolishness. James says that those who will respond in God's wisdom will literally plant seeds of peace. And if we're going to love our community, we must plant seeds of peace within our community. And right now, as a nation, our nation is being led to believe that there's anything but peace in this nation. You understand that? We are being led to believe that everyone has no peace. Does anybody here have the peace of Jesus in your life? Oh, there's, there are millions in our country that have peace. But that's not what we're being told. I want you to understand that today. 
So if we're going to reap a harvest of peace in our relationships within our community, we need to have wisdom. And this wisdom is the foundation for loving our community. And today, I want to look really quickly at seven different things that James talks about, seven different ways that wisdom is going to help you love our community. Are you ready? Do you have your notes? There's no version live app today. Uh, we had some technical difficulties, so you'll have to follow along with the notes in your bulletin. Way number one is this. If the kind of wisdom, if we're going to love our community in a way that they're going to comprehend it, we need the kind of wisdom that comes down from heaven. First of all, it's going to be pure. Jameson Fawcett Brown commentary says this, that pure is chaste. It means sanctified, pure from all that is earthly, sensual, or devilish. I love what Barnes says on 317. The word here used is that which would be applied to one who is innocent or free from crime or blame. The word that we would use is integrity. If you want to love your community in a way that they are going to comprehend, you need to to communicate with integrity. You need to live with integrity. Because if you're not living that way, they're not going to get it. They're not going to sense that you love them. Are you with me? Do you understand where I'm going here today? So in order to to do that, we've got to live a life of integrity. Proverbs 11.3 says, The integrity of of the upright guides them, but the unfaithful are destroyed by their duplicity. Do you know what duplicity means? It means two different avenues, two different ways. If the world sees duplicity in us, our communication to them will not be interpreted as love. Because we're hypocritical. We need to speak in wisdom. We need to have integrity. I love what Will Rogers says. He said, lead your life so you won't be ashamed to sell the family parrot to the town gossip. (laughs) Now, I only know one person with a parrot, and they aren't selling it, but that, that makes sense, and I was thinking about that. You know, you think, Oh, they, they really don't hear what's going on. They're, they're an animal, but if they just mimic what they hear and they mimic what they hear at your house, that could be embarrassing. Integrity is doing the right thing even if no one will ever know. And in order to effectively love our community, we need wisdom which is pure. It's full of integrity. And let me tell you something about integrity. It's easy to lose your integrity, but it's very hard to regain it. Because once you lose it, people never forget about it. Are you with me? We need to maintain integrity when we communicate with our community. I was thinking about yesterday, thinking about those that came that we served. And if if we're giving two messages in that event, we've lost our integrity. Do you get what I'm saying? If we say we love you, but you know what? You're really inconveniencing me. That's two different messages. We don't have integrity. And they've lost the message that we believe God wants us to speak to them. Number two, the kind of wisdom that comes down from heaven that's going to help us communicate to our community must be peace-loving. This kind of wisdom is going to impact our relationship with everyone around us, our neighbors, our family, our coworkers, our kids, our boss, our employees, your kids' teachers. It's going to impact them. At the end of the service today, it's gonna, we're going to tie this all in with yesterday and today, and we're going to pray over those that are a part of our school system. We're going to pray for them today. Man, let me tell you something. I'll bet you teachers could tell stories about parents who proclaim to be Christians who have ripped them mercilessly. We're sending two different messages. We need to be peace-loving Matthew Poole, in his commentary, says, Living peaceably disposes men to peace, both as to making and keeping it, in opposition to strife and contention, which is the fruit of earthly wisdom. Did you hear that? The fruit of earthly wisdom. He's relating back to James chapter 3. He is saying that the fruit of earthly wisdom is strife and contention. 
I love 2 Timothy 2.24. I quote it often and I pray it frequently. It says, the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but must be kind to everyone. So in order to love our community, we need God's wisdom, which is going to help us to not antagonize those we interact with. Come on. Can I get an amen this morning? That's good. Roger, that is good preaching. I'm just telling you. You guys traveled a long way to be here this week. That is good preaching. You can take that home with you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. For, oh, okay, we're all on board together now. Oh, I love it. Thank you guys for always putting me in my place. I appreciate that. We shouldn't be a button pushing people. You know, sometimes God, if God has given you the ministry of knowing what buttons to push, okay, at least push the right ones, okay? Push the good ones. But sometimes we, we, we want to antagonize. Antagonist, that's not one of the gifts of the Spirit, friends, okay? We, that when we're using the wisdom that comes down from heaven, we're going to be peace-loving people, and the world is going to understand that when they, we communicate with them, okay? Number three, if we're going to communicate with the world in a way that truly says that, that they understand we love them, we need wisdom that comes down from heaven, and next it's going to be considerate. So let me ask you a question. Is it easy for you to deal with the failings, the weak failings of others? Do you, are you quick to forgive then? you're probably considerate. You're probably a peace-loving person. Gill's exposition says this, that those who are, who are considerate, they, are re they readily forgive injuries done to them. Did you get that? Injuries done to them, okay? They do not rigidly exact what is their due. They recede from their just right for the sake of peace and love and do not bear hard upon others for their failings, but cover them with the mantle of love. Man, I love that. Being considerate is what we would call gentleness. And a lot of people think that gentleness is weakness, but gentleness is not weakness. Gentleness is harnessed strength. I could respond and I could blow you out of the water because I'm right. But I choose not to. That's gentleness. If we're going to communicate with the world in a way, with our community in a way that they're going to understand that we love them, we need to have a spirit of being considerate or gentle with them. And there are times when we're going to be right. And you know what you need to do with that? You need to do this. Just put it in your pocket and forget about it. Okay? There's going to be times when you're hurt or offended. What do you need to do? You need to forgive. That's how we communicate. And that makes a huge impact in our world. Proverbs 15 says this, A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. The tongue of the wise adorns knowledge, but the mouth of the fool gushes folly. You may have every right because someone in the community has wronged you. And you go on social media and you pull up your Facebook and, or you go on that, that website and you're going you're gonna to respond and you're going to give them an earful and you are really going to have your moment. Or you can be considerate and you can communicate in a way that will say, I love my community. Number four, if we're going to love our community, the kind of wisdom that we need that comes down from heaven must be submissive. You say, wait a second, pastor. Why do I need to be submissive to my community? Well, the Bible tells us, first of all, that we do need to submit to our spouses, to our parents, to each other, to the authorities, to the Lord. Barnes notes tell us that this word is used nowhere else in the New Testament. Now, when there's a word that's used nowhere else in the New Testament in the Greek, I think we need to pay attention to that particular word for just a moment. And it refers to being easily persuaded. It refers to be, being complying in situations that are right and proper. It doesn't mean that you admit your, your, that, that, that something is not the truth, okay? I, I don't... I, 
I, I realize that somebody's going to say, well, pastor, you're asking me that when something is not the truth that I shouldn't, I shouldn't stand up for truth. Well, let me tell you, there's a lot of truth that's insignificant, okay? Sometimes when you're right about something, it's about something insignificant, I'm not asking you to deny doctrine. I'm not asking you to deny the truth of, of who God is. But I believe that, that we can allow ourselves to have discussion about things. We can allow ourselves not to be defensive. We don't have to be stiff. We don't have to be stern or obstinate or unyielding. We can be easily reconciled. In the community, you are going to have relationships that, that go through difficulty. And I want to say something I, that I appreciate about Silver Creek Church. I believe that we have a heart to reconcile broken relationships. And I mean it. And that's, it's hard work. It's tough. Because when people get hurt and offended, they generally dig their heels in and they don't want to give up their position. And in the community without God, imagine how much more difficult that is. What do we do? We just write them off. Okay, guess I'm never going to have a relationship with that individual because there's some form of brokenness that has happened. But when we are submissive, we are at least able to have a discussion. We're able to be reconciled with others. Again, not expecting that we, we, we don't uh, acknowledge the truth, but yet we are easy to work with. We have the ability to discuss and be persuaded on some matters, while others, we will remain firmly in, in the position that we're in. Number five, if we're going to love the world in a way that they're going to understand, we need the kind of wisdom that comes down from heaven, and it's going to be merciful. Now, merciful, we often get mercy and grace confused. Grace is God's undeserved favor. We're saved by grace. But mercy is when we don't get something that we have coming to us. And I want you to remember that we're talking about two kinds of wisdom, earthly wisdom and wisdom that comes down from heaven. And earthly wisdom says this, man, I got you, no mercy for those that have been defeated, those who are weak, I, no mercy, okay? Did you guys ever have to cry uncle when you were kids? Oh, yeah. did, you ever, did you ever do that? I remember that. We had, there were, I remember one time, I think, Dad, when Dan and I got into it uh, a little bit once, and it, this was going to be a who's ever going to cry uncle, okay? And, and um, I was older and I was bigger, uh, but but I, I, I really struggled with getting to that point where you had to try to make somebody cry uncle. But that is the, that's, the, that's the way our world functions. That's, that's the way people are outside of that heavenly wisdom that God has for us. In 30 years of ministry, I've only had one person that at the end of their life said, Pastor, I want you to speak on this scripture. And that was Ray Lubaka. Ray, that was your dad. Remember that? Micah 6.8. That was Ray's verse. It says this, He has shown you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Man, I love that. Ray wanted that preached at his funeral, that we would love mercy. In Matthew chapter 18, Jesus tells the story of a servant who owed his master a great sum of money. And he came before uh, his master because his master said, it's time to pay up. And he said, I can't pay. And the master said, well, I'm going to put you in prison until you can pay everything back. And the man begged for mercy from his master. He said, master, please do not send me to prison. And the master had mercy on his servant. That servant went out and he found another fellow servant of his who owed him money but far less than he owed his master. And he said, pay me the money that you owe me. And the man said, I can't have mercy on me. He said, no, I'm sending you and your family to prison until the debt can be paid. Jesus said that the master found out and the master called his servant in front of him, and he said, now you're not going to be forgiven. 
Why? Because he did not have mercy. Friends, you and I have been shown mercy by Jesus. We have not received what we deserve. I don't know about you, but I deserve I deserve to pay for my own sin. I deserve hell for my wickedness. But God has treated me with mercy and grace. And so doesn't it make sense that I want to deal with the world with that same mercy that God has treated me with, I want to treat others with? That's how we should communicate. That's what we should be speaking to our community. And they will understand that we love them. Number six, if we're going to love our community in a way that they understand, we need the kind of wisdom that's impartial. The word impartial, it, it's, it's one of those words that it refers to judging between two individuals. It means showing favoritism for one over the other. James tells his readers that in the body of Christ, there should be no difference in how they treat others that they come in contact with based on their wealth or their lack of it. There should be no way to tell as you communicate, as the church communicates love to our community, they should not be able to tell that there's any difference between themselves and anyone else, whether they are poor or whether they are wealthy. Friends, that is the heart of God. God. Salvation doesn't come with a price tag. There's no amount that we can pay for it. So as we communicate to our world, we communicate a heart of love. And it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter how much you make. What matters is that Jesus died for you. And that's what we proclaim to them. James chapter 2, verse 4, Have you not discriminated among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Oh, church, that we would not communicate that way, but that we would communicate a love that, is, that has nothing to do with their standing or their status within our community. And number seven, if we're going to love our community in a way that they understand, we need the kind of wisdom that is sincere, And the Greek word for sincere, it refers to the arts. It refers to actors that would come up and and they would act out an entire play and they would act out all the characters. And when they would need to change character, they would go behind something and they would come out with a mask on depicting another character. Then they would go back in the next scene and they would come out with another mask on representing another character. You see what I'm saying? Friends, when we communicate with our, with our community, we need to communicate without a mask. The word is authenticity. We need to be real, okay? Do you know that, that the world our, and much of our community, they think that Christians think of themselves, that we have it all together. Does anybody here believe that you have it all together? Okay. I'm just saying, I don't think so. I don't think I have it all together. I don't think you have it all together. But for some reason, our community believes that we do. So we better be communicating with authenticity. We better communicate in such a way that says, hey, you're broken? Come on in. We're all a bunch of crackpots. We've just, thank you. Thank you, Matthew. We've just experienced the love of Jesus. And he's forgiven us. And he's healed us. We still bear some of the marks. But man, thank you, Jesus, that he's forgiven me. Thank you for his mercy. Thank you that he's brought healing to my life, to my family, to a degree. Man, I'm still praying because I still got, we still got some people that are messed up. We're not perfect. We're not all together. But we can be authentic. Paul says in Romans 12, 9, love must be sincere. Hate what is evil, cling to what is good. These series this summer that we've done, I love my family, I love my church, and I love my community. 
I just, I really believe that it's been a God-ordained thing for us. Yesterday, we, we, we just had the opportunity to love our community. To just open our arms up and love them. With the hope of nothing, getting nothing back. We could have done something different with our day. We could have gone to the lake, gone to the beach, gone fishing, played some golf, gone rummage sailing, whatever your thing is to do. But instead we chose to serve. Why? Because God has called us to love. He's called us to love. Several years ago, the Lord just spoke to my heart the words, embrace the lake. Man, the Lord has given me such a love for this place, but not just the place, the people. The people, because that's what it's about. That's what our community is. Our community is not buildings. Our community is not events. No more than the church is the building or the event. It's people. That's who we're talking about, people. Thank you for watching the message today. If you've accepted Christ as your personal Savior, or if you have questions about your personal walk with Jesus Christ, we'd love to help answer those questions. We've prepared something specifically for you. It's a five-day devotional called Walk by Faith. We'd love to give you this as our gift to you today. Please contact us using the information provided for you on the screen. May God bless you.